All right, welcome back to the Twin Flame Energy Online Podcast. I am your host, Dominique. And I am your co-host, AJ. All right, well, this is podcast number nine, and the title of today's podcast is Highs and Lows. Are they worth it? Are they? Are they worth it? Who knows? We will find out. So, the first article we are getting to today is from psychologytoday.com, entitled, Moving Toward Emotional Balance. So let's jump right in. So the best way out is always through. That's by Robert Frost. (laughs) Being out of balance emotionally unusual, uh, usually involves either not allowing yourself to experience your feelings as they involve by avoiding or evolve by avoiding or suppressing them or being so attached to the identified with them that your feelings are all consuming. Emotional balance occurs when we allow ourselves to feel whatever comes up. So feel, w- without feeling satisfied or overwhelmed and learn to accept our feelings without judgment. Thoughts on that? You tell me. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess it makes sense being out of balance emotionally. Mm-hmm. Meaning that you're not, you know, we always think that we're supposed to control our emotions Versus mm-hmm. understanding that sometimes allow yourself to feel. Yes, allow yeah. yourself to feel them. You have to acknowledge that they exist, right. and actually, that's the only way you can really learn the lessons that are needed. You know, when you're low, literally, there are <laughs> lessons to be learned, so that when you're high, you can actually appreciate it. You know, right, right. Um, so, ironically, efforts to keep painful thoughts, mm-hmm. feelings. And physical sensations at bay may work temporarily, but in the long run, only prolong those experiences and intensify the suffering connected to them. Suffering is a function of how people think and feel about the emotional and physical pain they experience and the beliefs attached to it. Mm. There is a direct correlation between the amount of effort expended to avoid pain and the degree of suffering experienced. The harder someone works to avoid pain, the greater his or her suffering tends to be. Mm -hmm. I wrote kind of in the comments or Mm -hmm. it kind of in the side notes, suffering is a choice. Pain is inevitable. Right. So basically it's the anticipation or like fighting. No, I don't want to feel that really actually makes suffering or -hmm. gives suffering power. Right, right. You know, I think that's quite interesting, you know. And the point is, is just don't give something with a negative connotation power. Exactly. You know, and also don't control it, but allow it to be. Right. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, very much. When you think about it. Yeah. That was pretty deep. It was. (laughs) (laughs) So there are several levels of awareness involved in, in cultivating emotional balance as straightforward as these may seem for many people they do not come easily or naturally so becoming consciously aware that you are experiencing an emotion although you may not know specifically what the feeling is it is important to simply notice and acknowledge that you have some feeling i agree with that because i think i do that i do that often like there are times when i wake up Mm -hmm. and i can't really pinpoint what i'm feeling like there are days when i know i'm not happy like the moment my eyes open i know what i'm feeling is not happiness or joy Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i know it's a lower frequency but i can't say that i feel depressed because i can't pinpoint anything specifically wrong Mm. it's just this in between feeling and sometimes i'm wondering like okay and i you know sometimes i'll say it to you like i feel something i don't know what it is but it's not good right at the same time i don't feel bad Right. You know, right. and I think just being able to even when it's confusing and it doesn't make sense mm-hmm. to even say, you know, that much. Right. Is, you know, it's something, you know, it's something. Right. Right. You are. Uh, you're still human. <laughs> <laughs> Put it that I, way. And honestly, it's like, human. honestly, you're in still... humanity, how many people haven't even begun to experience what it really means to be human? Right. You know, because really tapping I mean, in like that. Most people don't. And so when you don't Mm -hmm. and you start to, you realize, damn, like all of this 
humanity have been missing out on. Right. By trying to fight against this feeling and that feeling. You know what I mean? Right. The idea of the dogmatic mindset and religion, honestly, puts you in a position to always be swatting away your feelings. Exactly. Instead of... Like it doesn't matter. Yes. Instead of actually exploring those feelings. But the point is, is to experience. And that is what exactly. it means to be Find their human. root. Right. Yeah. Experience everything. So number two, identify the particular emotion. It may be helpful to close your eyes, turn your focus inward, and allow yourself to experience that emotion in your body. Mm -hmm. Different emotions are typically experienced in different parts of the body. For example, anger might manifest as tightness in your neck and shoulders, sadness as an ache in your chest, fear as a knot in your stomach, and joy as warmth in your heart. Mm. Yeah. That is so true. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what's funny is the song, Heartache. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I know what, like, where it's the sadness, the ache in your chest. Right. I'm really, really good friends with that feeling. Like I can physically feel that. F- it gets to the point where you feel almost like you're going to have like almost a heart attack. Like you can feel like this draining pain in your chest mm. mm-hmm. when you have immense sadness or hurt. I can attest to feeling that feeling. So this is accurate. I I would say for me, a lot of times is not understanding what certain feelings even mean you know where you you were feeling a certain way and you're like i don't know why i'm feeling this way i don't know how to identify where this is coming from or what it's from or what you know what i mean so it's like sometimes it's it's hard to identify and i mean i may be speaking for multiple people and and maybe in, in my case as a man, that's sometimes we probably all feel that way. You know what I mean? So. I, I, can, I can see that for yeah. sure. So number three, um, put the emotion into words. I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling sad. Putting the emotions you experience into words by making these simple self statements can create space so you can respond intentionally rather than react automatically and unconsciously. Yeah. It's, it's almost like you got to take, if you take the pause or, you know, sometimes, and it's easier said than done. How Mm -hmm. a lot of times people will say before you open your mouth, close your eyes and take a deep breath. Right. And like really like tune into what you're currently feeling in that moment so that you can process it and be able to articulate it so that, cause honestly, even if, all that you're feeling is pissed off and you start Mm -hmm. your sentence with I'm feeling angry it almost makes the other person more apt to hear you because you're Mm -hmm. you're coming from a place from saying you know what in this moment this is a emotion I am feeling versus just like flying off the handle and being like you know right I get it yeah I I I definitely think that makes a big difference I get it and but that's that's the thing. And going back to what I was saying about if you if it, sometimes it can be hard to even identify that. Mm-hmm. You know, like, am I feeling anxious? Is that what that is that what anxious feels like? Yeah. Is that what this feeling is? You know what I mean? Is it sadness or is it that I'm so relieved and joyous that I cry? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So sometimes. I would say men may may not get that connotation, you know what I mean? Yeah. May, they may not understand it as well as, you know, women, because women live through emotion. And as men are probably are taught and suppressed for so many years of not even being told to acknowledge a, a feeling or right. emotion, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you, you, you don't cry, you, you, you hold that in. Or, you, 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 you know what I mean? So yeah. then when you become conscious and you're understanding, like, but I, I've been holding that in for ugh, 20 plus years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that can be a, a big thing. You know what I mean? So the point is, is I guess for men, start 
acknowledging that you, emotions exist inside of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it exists, you know, and feel it. Let it out. Right. I agree with that. Well, the second article that we have for today, um, we're going to get this from the contentwolf.com. It's entitled Reasons Why We Wouldn't Enjoy the Highs Without the Lows. Mm-hmm. It says, do you get envious of people who are always dealt a good hand? You know the type, sunshine and rainbows. There's apparently no wrong turn for them. They've gone through their life without experiencing any bumps in the road. Mm -hmm. And you ask yourself, why? Why do they get handed everything on a silver platter? (laughs) It says, remember, everyone has issues and don't be fooled. You never really know what's going on behind the scenes. Right, right. I I get that. Um, So according to this article, there are many great reasons why we wouldn't enjoy the good times without experiencing the bad and why life's lows can be hugely valuable so like number one the bad times remind you of the good things you have in your life i agree with that there's something that i said to my mom recently because my mom was a person who is always like never down really Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so one thing i said to her was like Cause I'm a person that definitely experiences highs and lows. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I'm very sure that my highs are a lot higher than her highs, but so are my lows. You've, you've, yes. You you know that, you know what a low feel like. So you're like anything above this feels way better than being in. Yeah. Like my highs can be a little bit euphoric. Right. So if you're always at a high, then you're at a plateau. Yes. You're always at a, you know what I mean? So then you could get, you know, almost numb. Yeah. A lot of people enjoy say, like, yeah. So have you enjoyed anything lately? Yeah. Like I enjoy life. I enjoy breathing. I enjoy, but it's like, yeah, but you know what I mean? You don't understand that it could feel better than just that. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Cause it's like a lot of people will say life is like music, you know? Yeah. If, yeah. A, if you play one note straight through, mm-hmm. it's not music. It's boring. Yeah. But it's like when you yeah. have like your high moments of the song, the low moments of the song, then you're creating this great melody, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. they both have their part in the song. You yep. know what I mean? Yeah. So that's a way to, to really appreciate both, you know? Yeah. You can't have a, a climax without something leading up to it. Exactly. It wouldn't be called a climax. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, there you go. Right. All right. Number two, the bad times force you to be a better stronger person mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i agree with that because yep. those are the moments when you're like i'm you know something goes down and you see what has come of it which has been happening to us recently just with a couple of things over the last few days where we're like all right we want to make this change or we want to make that change and we never want to do this again we never want to see this happen again right. but that wouldn't be that way unless you get to that point where you're like oh crap You know what I mean? Which would be considered a bad time. But I think in the end, a year from now, we'll be so much better and stronger because of what's happening right Mm -hmm. now. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, I'm the type, I don't really look at bad times as just bad. Mm -hmm. I look at like, okay, this experience happened. Now, what can we do to avoid this experience happening again? Exactly. You know? So I look at it that way. So like number three, the bad times help you uh, to reflect on where you need to improve. Kind of like what I was just saying. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Cause it's like, you would never change anything if everything was always good. Right. And then without those changes, you won't go to the next level, you know? Right. So, (laughs) which happens to be number four, Mm -hmm. the bad time pushes you to make changes. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're just creating this list and not even thinking that it is to list. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Because, I mean, that's how we look at it. And we we look at things not as like, this is how it's supposed to be. No, we look at it as that's this perspective. Mm -hmm. And that's another perspective. That's another perspective. You know what I mean? Exactly. So when you look at experiences the same way, this is a bad perspective, Mm so-called. To most, but not for me. Right. Because it's all learning. Exactly. You know. 
And everybody's spot in life isn't the same spot. We're not clones of each other. You know what I mean? We all have our own specific purpose in this life. So yeah. if I do what you do, then I'm going to be feeling your purpose, not mine. Yeah, learning would not exist if we woke up with knowledge. The end. <laughs> drop, drop the mic. <laughs> you know, <in> the podcast. <laughs> I mean, but seriously, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like people sometimes think and assume that you just, just because, wake up knowing things. Right, right. And you never know what that person has gone through or if they yet to gone through it. Mm hmm. So when people judge, you know what I mean? Well, you're 20. You should know this. Well, they have never experienced that. Exactly. So they have to learn it. Exactly. And then we judge people, humans judge, and then they, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> but that, the bad times make you human. That's mm -hmm. number five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Exactly. That's 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 it's a the part experience. of the human experience. Yep. It would mean nothing without those times. Yep. All right, number six. When everything's good all the time, things can get boring. <laughs> that, we, we, said earlier, <laughs> we said that earlier. Yeah, things get boring because it's always at a joy. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. It's always at a high. So it's like, and you know, it's that, not really a high then. It's just an obsession, like. Because we've become people who are so polarized, mm -hmm. good versus bad, right. up versus down, right. everything is right. picking a side all the time. Right. We don't get to appreciate everything. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, yeah, it's just people want change. And that's why yeah. some people will kind of like lash out and make these like rash decisions when in reality, if they were able or allowed to, or, you know, encouraged mm -hmm. to just embrace all of it. Like, I think a lot of times people make bad choices only because of the fallout of a mistake. Like you right. make a mistake right. and you're so terrified of what people are going to say, people being disappointed in you because making mistakes is just like something that people just shouldn't do supposedly mm -hmm. <laughs> that you make another mistake to cover it up or you don't fess up to it early enough in order to fix it. And then it lingers for longer and gets bigger versus you being able to either reach out and get help assistance, you know, whatever, right when it needs to happen. Yep. That's what I, it's so funny you say that because I literally tell every person that I, I give like vocal lessons to, is that if you sing, and I, I want you to sing in a corner so you can mess up and mess up loud, mess up loud and clear. Because if you mess up low, you won't be able to hear what you need to fix. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times people don't even know what they sound like until they record themselves. And they're like, oh, I don't like to. Exactly. Well, <laughs> if you go in a corner of a room and start singing, you can hear it literally instantaneously. Kind of ping back. Wait yeah. a minute. That note is wrong. That mm -hmm. don't sound right. Yeah. That ain't clear. Yeah. You know, but you be singing all in the bathroom and it's radiating with different tones and frequencies. It's like, <laughs> yeah, everything sounds good. No, it don't. It don't. It sounds terrible. You know, take yourself in the car. <laughs> but, you know, like number seven, the bad times force you out of your comfort zone. Which makes sense, especially with someone doing vocal lessons and learning to sing. Mm -hmm. That's complete, especially in the beginning. You're completely out of your comfort zone. All right. All right. So that definitely makes a whole lot of sense there. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> well, 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 it looks like it's about that time for us to take a quick music break, but we will be right back in a moment.
back from break and that was inversion by as usual vapors available everywhere <laughs> <laughs> all right all right well it is now about that time to talk about the book of the month of course and once again we are talking about the 80 80 marriage a new model for a happier stronger relationship by nate and kaylee klimp this week's assignment was the first half well, excuse me, the first two chapters, not first half, but the first two chapters of part three, mm -hmm. which is building a new structure. So chapter eight and chapter nine. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we all know this is my absolute favorite part of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so where do I begin? She's a book nerd. I mean, it's just so much great information. Okay? No, it's good. It's really good. <laughs> All right, so chapter eight is called Shared Success, the 80-80 structure. So one of the first things that I thought was really cool, they have something called the five elements of structure. So just hitting on a couple of cool tidbits in this chapter eight to start. So shared success is the blueprint for organizing the tasks, to-dos, and decisions in married life around this radical goal of winning together uh -huh. yes so boundaries become a way of saying no to the opportunities requests and demands of modern life that don't lead to shared success uh -huh. so pretty much what uh -huh. they're saying basically is if you get to the point where you understand that it's not you versus me it's us it kind of completely changes things. Right. It's like right. the better the structure of shared success in a marriage, the better the sex, it says. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> marriage as a team sport. This 
part I thought was really cool. In our interviews with happy couples, we heard a common metaphor again and again. An 80-80 marriage is a team sport. As one oh man told us, for us, marriage is identical to being on a basketball team. If one of us isn't good at three pointers, then that person focuses then that person focuses on passing. It's a team mindset that the opposite that's the opposite of give and take. It's a mindset that says, what do we need to win together? So when we think of marriage as a team sport, we begin to see that there is a third entity, another factor that is to be considered. It's your shared success. It's your team. That's right. Yes. In this insight. Uh, exactly. <laughs> and I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how this works out. So it says in this insight <laughs> changed everything for us for the first decade or so. And it's so funny. A reason why I really highlighted this part because we've been married going on 11 years. And so they said for the first decade or so of being together of our life was structured around the 50 50 habit viewing mm. our individual projects careers and goals as separate sure we celebrated each other's wins but we also lived with a subtle sense that we we each had to protect our turf from the encroachment of the other person's work in our conversations there's only two interests at play mine and yours right so what if we structure all of life, our career, parenting, logistics, and work around the house with the question of what is best for us? Mm -hmm. So here's something, and I'm going to ask you a question with this one, okay? Oh, Lord. It says, <laughs> it's an experiment that led us to restructure everything. But most important, it led us to name this new third entity in our marriage. We call it Kajona. The combination of the first two letters of our two names and our daughter's name. So what is Jonah? So what is our team name? <laughs> I don't know, Vaporel <laughs> or Vimp. <laughs> what is Vimp? Camp and vapors. I don't know. I, don't, I mean, I don't. Know. I don't know. <laughs> Inside jokes. Just give me my moment to laugh, people. Yeah. <laughs> so, funny. so instead of defaulting to the worst of our 50-50 habits, asking what is best for me, we can now address the challenges of life by asking what's best for us. Or mm -hmm. in our case, what's best for Kajona? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the name of the third entity. In short, this new name allowed us to remember and prioritize the essential third entity in our marriage and our team. Well, remember we said that a long time ago, <laughs> Alanique. Yeah, you did and, say that. And I just Dallin. kept it moving. Um, Dallin. Thought that was some like weird <laughs> ghetto way of uh, Dallin. You know, listen. I'm sorry. This is going to not go over well, but how people take the two pieces of their name and they name their kid that I think it's oh, very. That's weird. It's the worst thing you do with a child. I'm weird. just saying that. But um, <laughs> come here, Dallin. <laughs> that sounds like a name. <laughs> Alanique. We don't want to hear any what of those. What are you doing? We don't want to hear any of those things here. Okay. <laughs> right, none of that. That's funny. <laughs> Says identifying. Well, there's actually something here that we both need to do, and we'll probably do it over the next week. There's basically a um exercise. There's plenty of exercises in the book. And there's an exercise where we basically identify kind of like the things that are important to us mm -hmm. and kind of create a shared plan mm -hmm. or plan for shared success. Mm -hmm. And they say by identifying these values is the first step to structuring your marriage around that shared success. And the next step is to use them mm. to design a structure of your life for navigating the five elements that throw off even the most stable relationships, which are roles, priorities, boundaries, power, and sex. Well, all yes. Right. That takes us to chapter nine, which mm -hmm. is entitled Roles. Who does what? The role is. You know? Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I have something interesting here that I thought was cool. So here's a conversation we had approximately 10,000 times early in our marriage. Okay. So this is a little skit conversation that I want, <laughs> want you to hear and get your take on. Okay. Mm -hmm. It says, so this is something 
We're going to start off with Kaylee, okay? It looks like a bomb went off in our grill outside. Can you take the lead on cleaning it? <laughs> then Nate comes in. I'm on it. I just put it on my list. One week later, <laughs> Kaylee says, I noticed nothing's happened with the grill. When are you going to get this clean? Nate says, it's on my list, babe. I'm telling you, I got it. Three weeks later. (laughs) Kaylee, I can't figure out what the hell is going on with your list. The grill still looks horrible. Are you going to clean it or do I need to do it myself? Nate says, you realize that the more you nag me, the less I want to clean that stupid grill. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> sounds about right no, <laughs> thoughts on that conversation uh, I mean sounds about right I mean it just sounds it just seems like everything just kind of blows up very quickly mm-hmm. without enough um, without enough I would say understanding mm-hmm. or understanding of, of of what's actually going on. Um, why, why, why didn't he clean up the, the <laughs> grill? You know, maybe it was cause he had 10 other things he was doing and it just slipped his mind. You know what I mean? Yes. Is that, is that acceptable or is that bad? Is that good? Or is that a problem? You know what I mean? But it, to her, it was like, it doesn't matter what was going on. <laughs> you ain't clean the grill. I'm, I'm mad. <laughs> That's kind of, you know. Well, it says, welcome to the delegate, resent, explode cycle. In most relationships, one partner is first to see the ketchup stains on the shelf in the refrigerator door. One partner (laughs) is first to notice that you don't renew the registration for the car and it won't be street legal next month. One partner is first to notice that it's your turn to host dinner with friends. Mm. While one partner is sitting on the couch binge watching Game of Thrones, this is more res- this more responsible partner can't help but notice the daily progression of problems, cracks, breaks, and logistics. Mm-hmm. This leaves the partner who cares more about the logistics of jo- domestic life with two choices. Choice one, they can <laughs> do literally everything themselves, a recipe for a lifetime of bitterness and resentment towards their mate. Yep. Or choice two, they can step into the role of domestic drill sergeant, bark out orders to their partner, unload the dishwasher, please, dust buster, uh, dust bust under Junior's car seat, please, take the ro- take Rover out for a walk, please, and while you're there, can you pick up the poop off the front lawn with this grocery bag? <laughs> okay, what? <laughs> grocery bag it's a tough choice to live in resentment or delegate to your partner like he or she is some sort of clueless college summer intern Mm. for most people the second option seems to be like the best path to basically right yeah that's (laughs) hilarious but it does seem to be like that sometimes like what our dynamic is interesting because i am the logistics person (laughs) and it's reality yeah i i I am, the, but it's like that for most women. Most women end up being the logistics person for some reason, not on purpose. We know when every bill is due. We know mm. all these things, and all these things mm. swarm on our brain. And maybe it's just because we have the capacity to keep it, you know, keep it straight. Right. But then sometimes, I and mean, I think that's obviously going back to that fifty-fifty thing. We get resentful. Like, why do I have to remember all this shit? Yeah, and I would say for us, it was it's like it's a lot different because it was like we we collectively communicated that you know that's a that's something that you're really good at you know what I mean yeah so we talk about it and it's like okay cool so you make the list and this and that of the bills and mm-hmm. it's like cool and we have understanding mm-hmm. so then we move on and yeah it shouldn't be a problem it shouldn't be a resentment or issue when it comes back up later you know yeah. I mean? like when you get tired of it it's like honestly oh, for me talked about it, when know? the money flows properly and we can pay everything mm-hmm. i don't feel the stress right i think it's when i may think that i don't know if all the money is there that is when it comes up as a stress and then i feel like i'm holding the burden of the Rob Peter pay Paul decision. Right, right. Like what can be moved, what can be not paid, or you know, that kind you of stuff. You know what's actually cool, and no, this is not sponsored, but that would be nice. Um, that honestly, what, what can stop that? Where partners collectively 
because this is a digital world. Partners collectively can understand and know when bills are due. They'll get notifications on their phones if they use like Truebill or something I like that. I hate that shit. So no. Yeah, but I mean, I don't plan on but, using but that. the cool thing about it is, is that <laughs> yeah, I know she just. I don't even, like it. I, I had it is so simple. I had a few. Listen, it's, it's so, but don't let me just I'll let me. Finish, you know, so you know, it's it's really simple. You log into all your bills, like straight from there. Everything is right there. You you both have the same account. You both log in. It, it connects to your bank account. It connects to everything, and you can see everything all at once. And when something is about to be due, it just like pops up. It's like, doo -doo -doo, you know, doo -doo -doo. The, I'm like, that's so dope. The problem that is, is so cool. The problem is that does not save me from the mental strain. Even if I put something in something that's going to be like doop doop, it, I'm still thinking about it. So there's no point in me using something like that. I'm a list maker. I have lists, I have a thing yeah, that I do every you. month and I, I'm always looking at the list and I've gotten to the point where it's like at the beginning of the week and I've only done it a couple of times, but what I would like to do is at the beginning of each week, I send you a text with all the bills due that week. So yeah, you have see, an idea. And that's the thing you like, that's all you like. You're good at that. You're one of a kind. Uh, most people ain't probably thinking like that. You know what I mean? It just, you have your way with all that stuff. And, It'll be the day you know. that I give up my brain space to that, that one of those stupid apps will do something stupid and then the lights will get cut off. And they'll be like, well, the the, the app didn't tell me Duke was... Oh, yeah, I'm no. not doing it's, that. Yeah. Mm -mm. It's not that. It's really just keeping that list. But because everything and everybody's so digital, you can collectively... I'm talking about as a collective unit, mm -hmm. collectively know together. Like when he doesn't know or doesn't see then it's not like that one person is alone to create that resentment. He's like, oh, I got a notification that this is due. So it keeps people on their toes. You know, that's all. <laughs> However. Oh, gosh. <laughs> no, Moving right I along. Must say, no, no, no. However, <laughs> let me just say this. I'm the same person because we have like a subscription. Like we're movie theater people. So we have movie theater subscription. Mm -hmm. So we can see through amc not sponsored of course we can see three movies a week we don't see three movies a week but it's we dope. have that option really so dope. when we want to go see a movie we just like make the reservation walk in but you kind of have to synchronize it together so i'll mm -hmm. grab his phone and have my phone and i'll synchronize to make sure our seats are together or mm -hmm. whatever like we're going to see Encanto on friday so i've synchronized it but whenever i do that i place it in the Google calendar and I send him a calendar invite. Oh, see. And I'm repeatedly saying, did you get the calendar invite for the movie? I never get. So you can block invites. off that. Check your email. So you can block off that spot. So you make sure you don't like, you know, set a session or have an appointment or anything during that time. And he's, I didn't see. See? Yeah, that, that's different. <laughs> that's different. That just don't be working on my phone like that. Listen. It don't pop up. It don't say nothing. It just be like, yeah, it don't do nothing. Okay. That's my defense. <laughs> well, right here it says. And I'm sticking to it. <laughs> once again, as we continue through chapter nine, mm -hmm. it says the cycle happens every six to eight weeks. Okay. This is the reason why we all get stuck. There will be an event that breaks the camel's back where I get to the point where I feel like I'm coming undone and I'm stressed and it's not fair and there's too much on my plate. Mm -hmm. There will be tears. He will get defensive. We will finally talk it out and it will get better for a short time. Then six to eight weeks later, it happens again. Back in the same spot. Yes. Yep. Yep. You agree? I mean, I, yeah, I understand that. You know what I mean? I understand that. So that's kind of the point of creating the roles for your shared success. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing is to play to each other's strength. This part that I thought was really cool when setting up your roles, I was like, you know, got my pen out. I'm like, yes, yes. So <laughs> <laughs> it says, so play to each other's strengths. I do all the bills and finances because they take less emotional labor and burden for me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cause me anxiety for Andrew. On the other hand, it's a huge burden. Mm -hmm. The goal of dividing tasks, in other words, largely is largely about efficiency. Right. As John put it, we try to think we can do what, well, what can we do well with the least amount of energy? 
So this is there's this, there's a couple Andrew and John. So they have built their roles around the concept of service level. Okay. So they define service level as the expectation each person has for a given task. I really love this. Okay. As Andrew explains in any couple, you have a different service level for your expectations for how clean the floor needs to be. I'm willing to walk, <laughs> not Dominique. Andrew is saying this people. Okay. <laughs> Andrew is willing to walk around with bare feet on a sticky gross floor. Okay. John let me, <laughs> is not. Let, let me throw it real quick. Hold on. <laughs> I can't. I cannot. Once again, that was Andrew. Okay. Oh my John god. John is not. Me and John are really good friends, clearly. <laughs> if one person <laughs> has to have a spotless kitchen, in other words, their service level for that task is high. If the other doesn't care, their service level is low. This insight led them to a powerful realization. If one person has a high service level, it makes the most sense for him to either own the task or be in charge of outsourcing it. The high service level partner, after all, will see problems that need to be addressed long before the low service level partner. So just to clarify that and how cool that is, me personally, my service level is higher. I'm just going to be honest. The re I, I can say this because like, for example, this is what like, you're a guy, so it's okay. But like, if you vacuum the floor, I will come in and be like, but look at all them corners. Over. You see what I'm no, saying? No, I do corners. You do? I do corners. To a certain extent. I do. Or like the kitchen. What it is, she, by the time she there. saw it, it would already have been activity. And then I'm like, like an I hour. did that. I <laughs> did that. But we got. <laughs> Two or three hours look, of activity. We, we do got, have a dog, a cat, and a child. Two of them. But. So, yeah, that, that's, that's how that be. So then that's why I get. Be, I, I have those moments where I get angry and bitter, and I'm like, I just did this. But listen, and you're like, but you didn't do. And I'm it's like, it's okay. Did, da, 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 listen, da, da, da. it's you okay know, to acknowledge back. the female eye, because for example, there are times when it, the house could be thrashed, and you'll have a session, and I'm like, I gotta go to work. I go to work. You get ready for your session. I come back. I'm like, you had a session. You're like, yeah, it was cool. <laughs> to me, all the things that I would like, look it's at, right. it's <laughs> right. it's and I'll, right. look, I'll look and like the dishes are overflowing, ain't nothing but a, and there's a bunch of stuff on the a bar. Plate or two on the bar. Though there are certain things that I yeah. think that people look at that can make or break the cleanliness of something. So, like if I'm home and you're having a session, I have like the hot spots that I can I know make the biggest difference. And those are spots that you don't think are a big deal. That's the female eye versus the male eye. It's okay. But it just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I'll be like, mm. hey, the dishes, the, the sink, need, if the sink is clear, the countertop is clear, and the stove and microwave are wiped off, that makes a really big difference to me mm. before someone comes into the house. Mm -hmm. That's just me personally. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay. There are a couple of the extra things that matter, but that's that's as good as it's going to get sometimes, depending on what's going on. So you just have to know we got different service levels. Your spot is obviously going to be the booth because that's or the laundry room <laughs> no, I, I, <laughs> because that's where the people spend a lot of time. It's actually not. I mean, it's other stuff that I right. You know, but so this is the last thing to look at on chapter nine because this to me is most important. The five role guidelines of shared success. So number one is skill. And obviously that plays to who's better at doing it. Who's better at cleaning up the kitchen? Who's better at cleaning this, that, or right, the other? Right. So identify the skill level. Number two, interest. Who cares about that area? I have a higher interest in cleaning the kitchen than you do. I know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. So obviously that ends up being where I, you know, my lane. Yeah, I like I like everything else like closets and rooms and organizing and yeah, and I'm more like and, bathroom kitchen. Yeah, stuff. bathroom kitchen. Yeah, it's yeah, like, and then we know that. Yeah, you know we know I mean? that. Uh, number three standards. Obviously, that goes back to the service level thing right. and w what is acceptable to each person. Yep. Number four 
is shared success. So obviously that's a getting to that 80, 80 thing. Mm -hmm. Um, this means not always about equal division or fairness, but considering the couple with the high earning partner who loves her work and the lower earning partner who wants to scale back at times and take more of a childcare situation. So with that shared success, it's really about the whole getting done, not necessarily making sure that it's done in a 50, 50 capacity. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. if I've worked all day and you cooked and cleaned mm -hmm. the 80, that's more of an 80, 80 thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like, somebody yeah. might be like, well, he did more in the house than she did. Yeah. But she was at work. Like just knowing that it's about the shared hole, you know? And you know what? It's, you have to, as a couple, get the mindset of everyone else outside of your relationship, out of your relationship. Exactly. Out of your brain, out of sight, out of mind. Like, if you have to think, like, well, you know, my mama think that it's going to be, well, then you have a problem. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a problem. I agree with that. That's just straight up. Because at the end of the day, if, if I do five things and she does two, we have an understanding that those five things is what I wanted to do. Right. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. not like there's less done and there's less of this. No, that's yeah. just our choice. And people need to own that more. Yes. And number five, lucky number five, big on that. is outsourcing. And mm -hmm. this is something we do talk about a lot of times, obviously. If there's something in particular, like sometimes we're like, you know what? We're busy. We got a lot of stuff on our mind. Let's call somebody to clean the kitchen and the two bathrooms. Mm -hmm. That's something that we can say you know, when it's important and it seems worthwhile to get something outsourced because it's going to be more beneficial to the whole, you know right. what I mean? Right. And lastly, when conflicts arise, we see that the, ugh, if I can read <laughs> when conflicts arise, we see this as feedback that something is off. Okay. Mm -hmm. With our roles in particular. Okay. So instead of torturing each other, with passive aggressive labor strikes or patronizing comments, we simply adjust the structure of our roles to bring things back into balance. So I think that is really deep because at the end of the day, when you're arguing, that's really what's going on. Somebody's not doing what the other person thinks they should be doing. Mm -hmm. And if they're not doing it, either they're not clear on what their role is in order to execute, or you guys haven't actually clearly define the roles and i think that's when we one thing we actually have never done like we've just assumed roles but we've never clearly defined them so it's like when somebody doesn't want to do something it's like well why is it my thing well we've never actually defined what is whose thing mm -hmm. we just kind of fell into in some in some some cases, roles yeah. you know what i mean cases, yeah so now that we have a clear understanding of roles the next step is to build the 80 80 structure to explore what to say yes to in life, which are your priorities, and what to say no to, which are your boundaries. Yep. And that's where we're going to leave off. Next week, we will have chapter 10 and 11. And then we will be going from there. Chapter 10 is about your priorities, and chapter 11 is about your boundaries. So those should be interesting to next week for podcast number 10. There we go. So, about... Uh you know, something called relish and she was talking about relish dog, and all that. <laughs> it's funny, but we're going to take a moment and talk about this app called relish. Okay. What is relish? The, the relish relationship app is a mix of fun science based micro lessons in the app for all couples to us. It feels like a game. With fun graphics, interactive quizzes, and interesting lessons, like your daily dose of a minute or three minute TED talk, you yeah. know, for example. So, what'd you think about it? I thought it was it was fun and cool. It was very interesting. I was like, oh, I like this. Well, what was funny is we were arguing, and then I just started <laughs> doing it, and you started getting messages that it was your turn. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? My turn for what? Like I was just like, do your relish. <laughs> I was I'm doing my mustard. <laughs> <laughs> mustard. No, but uh yeah, it was really fun. It was cool. Um and and like and a lot of it makes you think. Okay, yes. that's the good thing about it. It makes you truly dive deep and think about your actual relationship. Yeah. A lot of times people probably be 10 years in and don't even know 
why they still like this person. Yes. Why this person is still here. What is it that you fell in love with this person in the very beginning from? Yes. And if you have little things that remind you of that on a daily basis, then you will keep things where they need to be. Yeah. So then you can go above and beyond and give them that 80 and another person will give their 80. I agree. You know? Yeah. Now I will say this because there is like opportunities for counseling and all that kind of stuff in there. Um, you know, we did the free trial, which I'll be counseling uh, t tomorrow because it is a hundred dollars for six months. Um, we are not there yet. Um, so we did the seven day trial to kind of take a look at it. We would say if you are there, it's kind of a cool app. If you feel like it'll be, you know, something that'll help your relationship. I would say this. If you, <laughs> if you, ha if you're in a relationship where it is on the rocks and you, but you really, you both decide that you really want to try to make it work, but there's some issues, bad issues going on. Definitely check it out. Consider that and, and even, you know, paying for it because I think that is, that thing is very worth it. Yeah. And as fun. a first step, we're not there though. So hallelujah. Yeah. But it's, but it, yeah, it's really nice. All right, so. All right, it's time for that pick a card, any card. Once again, and we are talking about the best self intimacy deck. And just to recap one more time, or not one more time, but once again, <laughs> about you, intimacy, relationship, past, life, and random. So let's uh, let's pick today's card. All right, which category are you doing to this this week? What did we do last time? I have no idea. Uh, well, I think it was random. It probably we did I think random. It, was, it random. was random. So let's do about you. Okay, let me find it. I have no I have no idea why. I said this that. what I like about you. We'll figure it out. And there it is. I have found the about you section. All right, so I think I picked, I think you picked last time, so I guess I'll pick this time. I did? You did. No, I didn't. Yes, not because I did like this, and you picked a card. I guess so. You sure did. Well. That's my turn. So the question for today is about you. What is an area about me that you'd like to learn more about or have questions around? That's... These questions be sometimes be tough because when you're like, look, when you're 11 years in, you know what I mean? Sometimes you're like, but that's just the marriage portion. We're more like almost 15 years in of being friends. Exactly. First. So, I mean, it's kind of tough where you'd be like, well, I want to learn. I mean, it's, you feel like, you know, so much about the other person. Mm hmm. Um, Do you I want to table it and you answer at the beginning of the next podcast? Like you last said time? that last time, and we did it right. What it, What would you say? Do you have a, Do you have something? Because you always put it on me. Of course I do. What is it? Um, an area that I'd like to learn more about or have questions around mm -hmm. would be your lack of trust and vulnerability ability if i can speak lack of trust and vulnerability okay i would like to del delve into that because you you're a guarded person even after 11 years of marriage Emma? you see senor i guess i guess so there you go i guess i'll have to table mine okay so ellen kemp will be answering oh i Give him your government name. I'm sorry, AJ. AJ will be answering this question at the beginning of next week's or maybe not podcast. Lucky number 10. <laughs> All right. Well, it is that time again. Drawing near to the end of the podcast, it is time to pick next week's topic. Can I get a drum roll, please? And the topic for next week's podcast is do opposites attract how different is too different hmm. pause hmm. think about it <laughs> do opposites attract yes mm -hmm. so do you have any final thoughts on this lovely podcast number nine um honestly I think people should just, for the kicks and giggles, 
try out the uh, relish app just for fun. There is a seven day trial, so you yeah, can definitely I, I think people should just try it out. Yeah. And just see how it is. You know what I mean? And you'll be surprised. You'll be like, what? You know, I, so, they might do that. They might do that. Yeah, they might uh, say exactly that. <laughs> I personally think that everybody should read this book, The Eighty Eighty Marriage. It's actually like the first book we read. I had a harder time reading because, not because it wasn't good, it was just the fact that the chapters were so long, and mm-hmm. sometimes I'd be like, "Oh, I gotta read two chapters." In two days, because <laughs> I'd wait to the last minute, and each chapter was like thirty pages, and I'm like, listen, listen. So because these pet chapters were are shorter, they're easier to tackle, and it's like I'm running through the book, and I'm excited, and I'm feeling good. So mm-hmm. I think it's an excellent book. I think whether you're in a relationship or not, if you're not in a relationship, it'll put you in the right mind frame to begin one on the right foot. And if you are currently in a relationship and you're having any issues at all, it'll definitely help you to start ironing them out because it doesn't just make you point fingers at your spouse. It makes you see the issues that, you know, how you contribute to the issues that you're having. So, right. right. Yes. So those are our final thoughts. All right. So that does it for this week's podcast and all of the articles used to drive today's discussion forward can be found in the discussion box or description box <laughs> as well as the links to the book of the month the 8080 marriage so thank you for tuning in today's podcast and be sure to like comment and subscribe and of course ignite your, your energy, energy.